in the coming years it would be described as one of the greatest upsets in modern cricket a team that in sehwag's own words was the best team he had ever seen better than the world cup finalists in 2003 and the world champions in 2011 that team would crash out of the world cup in group stage a crash that would end at the bats of sri lanka but would start at the hands of bangladesh a team that was playing its third world cup who had not crossed 200 even once in the last edition who in 14 outings with india had managed to defeat them just once such would be the shock of this outster so absurd was this reality that nobody in the indian management had even bothered to secure a way back home the indian team would have to wait for 2 days to even get a flight but in a way it was good that they couldn't go back cuz the situation back home was unpleasant so as the players families would be given police protection and effigies and posters burned in the streets among the top targets for the people's anger would be sehwag starting from 2005 his form in odis had seen a noticeable dip in fact in the run up to the world cup he had failed to cross the 20 run mark 11 out of 13 times so already his mere addition to the team had been a point of contention and though he would go on to destroy bermuda he would fall woefully short against the rest especially in his bangladesh where he would fall for just two runs and as much as people blamed him sehwag would blame himself even more closing himself in his room for two days straight refusing to even let the housekeeper come in he would spend hours after hours just lying in his bed watching prison break but there was to be no respite for sehwag from his prison cause in a move that beggared belief the selectors would decide to kick sehwag out not from the odis but from tests His test performance was the exact opposite of ODIs. Many regarding him to be the best test batsman in the world, but then to be booted from there to prove your worth in ODIs because they were about to go against the team that had put them in this position. Yes, India was about to tour Bangladesh in what was being promoted as the revenge tour. But for Sehwag, it was to be a fight for his career, a fight that he lost. In spite of some good starts, he would fail to convert them into beginnings, leading to him being dropped from all formats of the game, having to go and play domestic leagues to earn back his place. A move that for most had been nothing short of a death sentence, and it might as well have been for Sehwag too, if not for Kumble. While preparing a team to go to Australia for a tour that historians would go on to call the Monkey Gate series. Kumble would insist on addition of Sehwag. This unusually obstinate move from what was a mostly agreeable captain made sure that not only would Sehwag be added but later with Bhaji sidelined due to the Sydney fiasco he would get a chance in the field a chance that he would then hold on to for dear life. Scoring at an average of 72 he would nearly single-handedly save the last test for India and when followed by his second triple century in the very next match Sehwag would truly begin the second inning of his career. And when asked whether he had changed anything in his batting style, he would say those few months had taught him to give the new ball some respect, to see at least what the ball is doing before I do what I do best. And such would be the results that this new approach would bring. Such would be the mountains of records and accolades that by the time the next World Cup would come around, there would be no doubt of Sehwag's place in the team. In fact, he would be chosen as the brand ambassador for the 2011 World Cup. So finally, things seem to have settled down for the Nawab. But that is when it would begin. It was just another press conference. The Indian team in Bangladesh for a test tour. Just another press conference and just another question: Can Bangladesh surprise India? Now most were expecting the usual company lines. They have some good players. You cannot take anybody lightly. But Sehwag took the mic and said, "No, they can't. They can surprise us in ODIs, but not in tests. They cannot take 20 Indian wickets. They." are an ordinary side for a moment people couldn't believe what they had just heard whether true or not to say something like this to their faces in their own house the bangladeshi fans all at once were up in arms one single statement had converted a friendly tour into a battle for national pride the bangladeshi coach actually coming out and saying sehwag should stay away from mics his comments might bite him in the bum in a few years it might even hit him in a weeks time now thankfully that did not occur in spite of some early pressure sachin and sehwag would stand strong resulting in the outcome that everybody was expecting but this incident would attract so much publicity such intense emotions from both the sides that the icc would actually decide to hold the first match of the world cup between these two nations 
Now yes, being co-host did play a major role, but normally the first match is decided on how much attention it can garner, and this bad blood could be used to advertise that opening match as a redo of that 2007 match. After all, that match was still on Indian minds. From India deciding to change the very structure of this tournament to seven out of eleven Indian players being part of that team too, the story practically wrote itself. And any doubts that people may lose interest in this match after a year were quickly taken care of by Sehwag by once again taking the mic and declaring, "I am planning on batting for full 50 overs in this match. We have been waiting for this moment when we will play against them in a World Cup. This is a revenge game for us." The next day's headlines would read. Team India seeks revenge for the 2007 debacle. Tonight, vengeance. Time to put the Caribbean nightmare behind. Here was the thing, though. While marketing was doing its thing, Tony had tried his level best to avoid this narrative because revenge, as good as it did sound, would not be as easy as it looked on paper. Yes, India were the favorites once again, but there were still a lot of questions regarding their pace attack, along with four of their top players coming into this World Cup injured, namely Sachin, Gambhir, Pravin Kumar, and Sehwag. Yes, the person who had thrown down the gauntlet of war was injured. While Bangladesh, they for the first time in their history were expected to make it out of the group stage, supported by the experience from IPL and other leagues. Bangladesh had built up a sizable lineup for ODIs, a lineup that had won them seven out of last eight home matches, allowed them to defeat England in England while whitewashing New Zealand at home. And the fact that that opening match was to be the first World Cup match ever hosted in Bangladesh. The morale was going to be unbelievable. In fact, such was the crowd expected for this match that people without tickets had started making pilgrimages to an empty stadium. Locals had been advised to stay away from roads. Beggars paid two dollar a day for three months straight to do the same, while the government had to declare a four day national holiday to keep the office crowd home. So suffice to say, Bangladesh had been like a pot of oil, just ready to boil. And now Sehwag had thrown a lighter in the proceedings. And it definitely didn't help that on the eve of the match, Bangladesh won the toss. Historically, Mirpur was famous for low-scoring matches and a lot of dew at night, so any team fielding second would face a huge disadvantage. So when Sehwag walked out in front of a bloodthirsty 25,000 strong crowd, everybody knew India was on the back foot. And given Sehwag's self-inflicted pressure of batting 50 overs, along with the 2007 debacle learned approach of taking the first few overs slow, the Bangladeshi plan was clear. Take him out right at the start, when he would be the most vulnerable, when he would be the most tentative. And this was what was mostly going on in Shafiul's mind as he began his run-up amidst a deafening cheer of his countrymen. This was their chance to take down the villain. This was their chance to become heroes. And as he bowled the first ball, a fractionally short, the new conservative Sehwag would bash it away to the boundary. This is the thing that everybody seemed to have gotten wrong about Sehwag. He meant each and every word he said. Coming from anybody else, it could be seen as provocation or even overconfidence or even a psychological tactic. But Sehwag, he knew just one thing: give your honest opinion without a filter, without any diplomacy. So in his eyes, Bangladesh truly was an ordinary side. He truly felt that they couldn't defeat them in tests. And most important of all, he truly, truly was out for revenge. Where everybody else seemed to have moved on, he had not forgotten that day, that tournament, that series. It was like a thorn in his side, not allowing him to rest. So yes, he was there to settle scores, and yes, he was gonna stay there for 50 overs. But when did he say he was gonna do so? By hiding in his shell. He would play out this match on his terms, the way he wanted, and for him, the best defense was to attack, and the best way to deal with crowd pressure was to shut them down fast. So the first over would be hit for 12 runs. The next another 12. By the time the fourth over would end, the scoreboard would read 36 runs. A disheartened Shakib would be forced to pull his paces from attack, having to fall back on his ace spinner Razak. The hope was that Seva would go after him and hand them his wicket. But then, shockingly, Seva stopped from someone who didn't even consider spinners as bowlers. This was unbelievable. But Sehwag, he had achieved what he wanted. The stadium now being as silent as a tomb. So Sehwag decided to just stop, stop and watch till he felt he was ready to pounce. And this would become a pattern of sorts. The moment the batting power play began, Razak would be hit for back-to-back -back sixes. But the moment it was over, stop. Sachin would get an out on horrible mix-up. Gambhir would go out on a softer sub dismissal. The debutant Virat would come to the crease. But Sehwag 
would just go on, following the script in his head like a man on a mission. The crowd that had been silenced into submission would now have to find solace in cheering when Virat and Seva got hit by bouncers. The management getting desperate enough to show those bouncers four times in a row to keep the morale high. But all of this would be background music for Sehwag as he step by step took India to 200 runs in just 31 overs. More importantly, completing the first goal that he had set for himself. Completing his century in 30 overs. And this would finally bring some hope to Bangladesh. Because the monster was limping. After getting hit for the upteen time, Sehwag's injury seemed to have resurfaced, having to call on Gambhir to be his runner. So finally, there was some hope that this would end. Hope that would soon turn into disbelief. As Sehwag, now having backed his words, having ensured that that didn't happen again, finally let loose. Shafil Islam would be treated as a punching bag from this point onwards. Razak as a school cricketer. And that ground, that would become Sehwag's personal playground, where he would take just 30 balls to complete his next 50, 34 runs of which would come from boundaries. And watching his first Ranji captain create a spectacle, Virat would join the party, creating a maelstrom that would take India to 300 in just 41 overs. Understand, for a stadium whose average first inning total was 222, this total was unsurmountable. So the match, in many eyes, was already over. And though Bangladesh would have something to be happy about in the end, succeeding in getting Sehwag out before the 50th over, his 47 and a half overs, 200 minutes plus stay at the crease, would ensure that nothing, nothing would come in the way of his revenge. The final total reading. 370 for 4. Virat Kohli 100. Virinder Sehwag 175. Now, credit where credit is due. Bangladesh would play their hearts out in the second inning. From Kais to Iqbal to Shakib, everybody would try the level best. But in the end, total would prove to be too much. Sehwag with Virat in tow had just taken the match away from Bangladesh. And in the end, as a victorious Sehwag would be called for the Man of the Match award, there would be no boasting, no taunting, no upmanship. He would once again state the facts. I have said before, Bangladesh are not good in tests, but they can compete in ODIs. But today, they could not. This was Sehwag, unafraid, unfiltered, unrestrained, whose unabashed outspokenness would start off India on the best possible footing, not avoiding or hiding away from the demons, but having faced and banished them head on, ready for whatever this tournament may hold. This was Sehwag's revenge. Not just a match won, but history's shadow banished once and for all. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Till then, I hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching.